You may not be aware of this, but PRA USA manages a technology career space on Quora, where we get a lot of great questions and even better answers to some tough questions facing people in their technology careers. Let's talk about some of those. Hello, Dan Trudeau here. I'm the VP and Executive Recruiter at PRA USA. And as part of our ongoing Focus 2021 campaign, we're highlighting today some of the questions and more importantly, the answers that we get on the technology career space that we manage over at Quora. If you're not familiar with Quora, it's a website, a, a place where people ask questions about just about any topic and get people with special knowledge in that field to answer them. Given our focus in technology careers, career advice, recruiting, etc., we started a technology career space, which is almost like a, uh, a site within the site where people from all sorts of electronic, software, IT, data science type disciplines can share information, share insights with each other about how to best manage your technology career. So as part of a regular feature, we're going to highlight three questions today and some of the answers that we got for those questions. Make sure you check out the description below this video to find the links to the original questions and answers. And not only that, uh, for potential ways to link to these experts who are answering the questions for us. The first question is, what early career insights have led to your long-term success? The first answer is from Miles Feidelman, or Fiddleman, who's a systems architect and entrepreneur. Miles says his most important early career insight was the importance of sales and especially of writing. He talked about how early on in his career, he had an opportunity to work for a huge proposal team and to work for one of the all-time great gurus of proposal writing. And not only that, he took an internal class, a six-week class, where he learned how to write proposals for sales, uh, communications to other teams, etc. Now, he says that one course, maybe six weeks long, was the most important thing he's ever learned, and this is a guy who's coming out of MIT. The second answer to this question comes from Robin Hood a 20 plus year IT veteran, an experienced job hunter. Two key insights Robin mentions are one, building a panel of experts to learn from. He says that's very key. He also mentions that working hard is not good enough, that professional branding and networking is key to success. And I can tell you right now, he is dead on with that one. I know that from being a recruiter, I've seen people who have good connections, good networking, good branding, as he calls it, vault ahead of people who maybe even have a little better technical skills. The third answer comes from Mahmoud Akhtar. Now, Mahmoud is a senior engineering consulting executive, and he's worked globally. Mahmoud emphasizes that persistence is the key to success. If you can combine that persistence with observing others, learning from them, and keeping your eye open for new opportunities, it's a formula for success that he's seen happen multiple times for himself and others. Now, for each of these questions, I'll also add my two cents. And my two cents on this one is, in terms of what I learned early in my career, I would say listening is probably the most important skill I learned early in my career. One of the reasons I'm up here, you know, talking about stuff on video is because I like to talk. I'm a talker. I express myself a lot. Well, I had to learn how to shut up and listen to people. It's very important, not just for a job like mine, but any position, especially in a collaborative environment which technology development happens in. Mahmoud mentioned in the previous answer, observing others, which means listening like I'm talking about, learning from other people's experience so that you can move yourself forward based on that. That's huge in any career, but like I said, especially in the technology field. Now the next question is one that comes up a lot in the software engineering field, which is what is the best career path for a software engineer with great coding skills, but poor communication and management skills? Cindy Korn gives a very good answer to this, I think, where she mentions, first, you want to work at a company that's got both technical and a management path uh, so that you can follow more the technical path and don't go down the management path. Because again, if you've got poor communication management skills, that's going to be better for you. This comes with a caveat, however. And that is that if you want to be successful as any sort of engineer, including a software engineer, you do have to work on your communication skills. Again, it's a collaborative medium. You're going to find yourself hitting a certain ceiling. I mean, at the very least, you have to be able to interview well. So I think Cindy was very smart to point this out. For my two cents on this one, I actually don't have a lot to add to that one. Uh, I've worked with a lot of engineers who are not fantastic communicators, but they can at least get the job done. 
And that's very important within your own projects. And as I mentioned, you have to interview at some point. You have to uh, impress upon people that you're a good hire. And in order to do that, you're going to need to be able to communicate. So if you're, you feel like you've got poor skills or you're just insecure about your skills, do find ways to work on that to build it up. You don't have to become an expert, but they have to at least be decent. Now, this next question is one of the more popular in terms of views and responses, questions we've had in the technology career space. It's a little long, so I'm, actually, I'm going to read it to you here. Does it matter if you get the same degree in a normal university or a prestigious university such as Cambridge or Harvard? Do these universities guarantee a better chance in employment when you present your degree from those types of universities? We found in the technology and engineering field, this question prompts a lot of response, a lot of opinions, so let's get into a few of the ones that we got. The first answer is from Kurt Guntheroth. Now, Kurt's a 40-plus year veteran of software engineering and the author of the book Optimize C++. Kurt's perspective on this is interesting because his father is actually a Harvard professor and he went to the University of Washington, which is a very well-regarded school for engineering. What he points out is that when he went to the University of Washington, a lot of his lower-level classes, his entry classes at the University of Washington, were taught in lecture halls with you know enough seats for 750 students, a lot of the material being canned where his father pointed out that the same class at, say, a Harvard would have 30 to 40 students, a lot more personal attention, you get more in-depth from the beginning. And Kurt mentioned as his career went on, you know, his classes at University of Washington became more like that, but that sort of individualized attention from people at the top of their field did make a difference, he had to admit. So while people like Kurt, they go to the University of Washington, they have very good careers, he does believe that that sort of uh, in-depth attention that sort of personalized education does give you an advantage coming out of one of the prestigious Ivy League schools. Now the next answer is from H. Larry Elman. Now Larry's answer is interesting because he has personal experience both going to MIT and the University of Oklahoma. And Larry's resume, if you look at his, his experience and everything, it is, he's, he's done a lot. This is a guy who's accomplished a lot in his career. Now he mentioned that normally it does matter quite a lot, most of the time depending on the subject. Again, he brings up the fact that at the more prestigious schools, they go even further in depth. They teach at a more complex level, and not only that, they expect more out of the students. So Larry is mentioning this because from personal experience, both at MIT and University of Oklahoma, so he knows this from his own life. Now, for a slightly different perspective, we go to Andy Dickens. Now, Andy is a test driver and automotive engineer for BMW. And he mentions, of course, that your degree is really just the first stepping stone to your career. And the answer, once again, depends entirely on what your focus is. He mentions if you want to be, say, a microchip designer, you want to work in that space, a degree from a good state school will be sufficient to get you started, get you going, get you on that path. He didn't mention, however, if you and another person are neck and neck for a job, something like a degree from an MIT or one of the prestigious schools might give them an advantage to be hired over you. So it's not like you get no value from it. It's just, as he mentioned, it's really a stepping stone. It's the beginning. It's what you build after your degree that people really care about from that moment forward. So for my two cents on this one, uh, I, I concur with most of what's here. I work with a lot of engineers. I've worked with guys from MIT. I worked with people from smaller, mid-sized state schools. And in the end, you can have a great career coming from both of those backgrounds. The number one thing I'd want to emphasize, though, if you're getting into really advanced stuff, really in-depth research work, as opposed to, say, working at a company, making a product that goes out onto the market, for that in-depth research stuff, for that, for that really cutting-edge stuff, those more advanced universities, the marquee universities, there's definitely a distinct advantage, especially when you go on to the graduate level. A lot of people get, you know, an undergraduate degree at, say, a state school, and then if they want to go in that direction, they can, if they do well enough at the state school, they can, at the graduate level, go to one of the, those more prestigious schools. And again, if you're looking for real cutting-edge stuff, really advanced research, that's definitely the direction you want to go. Now, this is just a sample of the content that's over at our technology career space on Quora. I highly encourage you to go there, check it out, follow it. Uh, you can get a lot of insight in terms of a lot of questions. There's content every single day from us and, of course, from the other contributors. You can even become a contributor on that space and maybe find your answer highlighted here as well. Check out the link below to the Technology Career Space on Quora and also like, share, and subscribe 
to the PRA USA YouTube channel because we're going to continue sharing questions and answers from that Quora space here. We are also going to be sharing career advice, um, job market, job hunting tips, industry expertise, our insights on where things are going in the job market, just anything that can impact and improve your technology career. We have 30 plus years of experience recruiting in this space and you can use the knowledge we've accrued to get the career you deserve.